brought a program to us. Let me tell you the history of this Good Health Williams. We had gotten a call that CDC had been trying to find the Divine Nine to give some money to, millions of dollars to. And we could not get the money. They, f they called the wrong place, whatever happened. So Synovia was happened to be talking to another Delta, uh, Sister Kelly, and she asked to know, we've been trying to find a panel in the council. We've been calling this number, sending this email to this website, nothing has happened. She said, okay, we can fix that. Synovia calls me, I call Miss Kelly, and this head in the movies, the rest is history. And the Divine Nine has got millions of dollars by way of this Good Health Wins initiative. And we certainly thank her uh, for what she's done. Uh, CDC awarded the National Council of Negro Women. National Council of Negro Women came to the Divine Nine. The National Council of Negro Women is run by the Deltas. Uh, started by the Deltas, run by the Deltas, et cetera. Et cetera. And the, right now the president is still a Delta. Uh, Dr. Dorothy Height uh, started the National Council of Negro Women. And they came to this program called Good Health Wins during the COVID vaccination, uh, asking all of us in our communities to get uh, vaccinated. And we know some brothers and people didn't. Many did, of course. We lost a lot of lives, a lot of brothers uh, going on to a mega chapter, a lot of family members, etc. We thought it was a good opportunity to have Zenobia come visit us all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We've got $300,000 the first year. Uh, we've gotten $310,000 the second year. Our third year this year, we've gotten $240,000. It reasonably we can have a million dollars in this project over the five years, and we hope we can extend it to another project with CDC or Good Health Wins. Uh, the fraternity keeps 15%. That's all we keep. That's for administrator doing reports. We got to be diligent in our reporting. And the other 85%, we've given it to all the chapters, undergrad chapters, graduate chapters, organizations, foundations within our fraternity. We're getting this money at the international level, giving it back to the brotherhood. So Without further ado, if we can have up Ms. Sinovia Moss, Delta Sigma Theta, she's the International Project Manager uh, for the National Council of Negro Women. She's going to speak to us this morning on vaccination protects our future. Vaccination protects our future. Good morning. To our grand bossless, my dear friend. <laughs> hey, bro, Wes said, man, come on, you got to know your history. So he said, Mayor McLeod Bethune right. uh, found a National Council of Negro Women. So Ford gave me some uplift. So, General, that's what the bros do get a bros some uplift. So much love. Let's give a hand to your grand bossless, my dear friend. Brother Lewis is almost. 40 years, as I will be celebrating 40 years in Delta Sigma Theta. To your Supreme Council, a very special good morning, and also I want to say a very special thank you before I get started to Brother George Fishburne, who is your national project manager for Good Health Wins. And to all of you all, all of the members of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, who we now make up the Good Health Wins Army, right? We are changing lives. And I come to you by way of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but this is day 11 of what I'm calling the Good Health Wins Quality Assurance Tour. Uh, 11 days ago, I started off in Los Angeles, went to Pennsylvania, went to headquarters at NCNW, just left Houston with Phi Beta Sigma. They couldn't believe I was leaving to come to you all. That was crazy. <laughs> to be here with you all and thank you for the love and hospitality. It has just been absolutely amazing. But then I leave today. I go to Detroit to Iota Phi Lambda. And then Saturday, I am, I'm a Sunday, I'm in, D, in Denver with uh, Zeta Phi Beta. And then I go to Kappa Alpha Psi, and then of course Delta Sigma Theta. And this tour has been going on. I've been away from home for about 11, 12 days now. But I had to be here first and foremost to say thank you. To say thank you to each and every one of you 
who has stood with the National Council of Negro Women hand in hand and heart in heart to help us get through what was enemy number one, which was COVID. And so I begin by something we say in the Good Health Wins Network, we're better together. Can you join me in saying we're better together? So I came down here for a couple of things to say yes. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the hospitality. But thank you for doing what we always do. We step up at the call of duty to, in this case, address those issues around COVID, getting us through the pandemic. But we at the National Council of Negro Women wanted to go a little bit more than that when the CDC came to us. And it had to be us. It couldn't have been anybody but us when it was talking about the pandemic response. Um, I don't know who is, how do I get the presentation started, but production, we can, oh, here we go. There we go, I'm good, thank you. So it had to be us to help with the COVID response because back in 2019, even before the pandemic began, the National Council of Negro Women had begun opening up conversations with organizations around health, health equity, vaccination. And when we talk about vaccine equity, we talk about health equity. So this is not about the COVID response. It's about what we've already been doing. And you all, I know that you all have been focused on health and all of our organizations have health platforms. And so I wanna just share with you all, and this PowerPoint deck is gonna be sent to anyone who responds to this email address. Take out your pen www.goodhealthwinshq at gmail.com. I want to hear from you today. I want to tell you when I put that call out to the signals yesterday how many of them responded, our email box is full. But I want it to be full with the men of Omega Psi Phi today because this is a continuation, as Brother Lewis has said, Grand Boss Lewis has said. We really want to continue this journey together around health and health equity. So we at the National Council of Negro Women, founded in 1935 by our beloved founder, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, who on Monday we were at headquarters in our yellow to celebrate 148 years that she has been with us. She would have been with us. But I just want to share with you something that Dr. Bethune said. She said, the progress of the world will call for the best that all of us have to give. And she said that back in 1935. You see, NCNW, we are an organization of organization. We were founded as a coalition. We are comprised of 30, 33 national women's organizations, and we have 300 sections all across the country. They're in community-based sections. We have college sections. But within those 33 national organizations, you have all of the sororities are involved, the links, top ladies of distinctions, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And I say that because as women, we've been working together in coalition for 87 years. And so we knew how to respond when the call came from the CDC. Our mission is to lead, advocate, and empower women of African descent our children, our families, and our communities, including you, because you are our husbands, our brothers, our uncles, our, our everything. You are the leaders in our community. And so we wanted to be able to come together when the CDC came to us around this program around health because you know why they needed us? It wasn't about the money when in COVID. COVID didn't care. COVID didn't care if you were rich, poor, black, white, whatever. COVID was here to take us all out, right? Raise your hand if you know someone who had COVID or if you had COVID. Raise your hand if you knew somebody who died from COVID or is dealing with long COVID right now. I wish you could turn around and see that almost every hand went up. Every hand went up. And that is the power of the work that we have to do. And so the CDC came to the National Council of Women and they asked us to help with the ground game because that's what we do best. And so we said we would build this infrastructure of health advocates. 
that we would address COVID first, and then do it, deal, then deal with flu, but also we'd have the opportunity to talk about the importance of vaccines across the lifespan, because you see vaccinations save lives. And that's why I'm here today. Because no matter how you felt about the COVID uh, vaccine, I'm sure you vaccinated your children to go to school or go to daycare centers. I'm sure that you know that if you're over 50, you need a, a, a shingle shot. I'm sure that you know that every year we're gonna have an outbreak from flu, right? So you get your flu shots. This is about the importance of vaccinations across the lifespan, and this is serious. You know, as of yesterday, 1.1334 million people have died from COVID. People are still dying every day. Think about that, 1.1 million people have died from COVID. But here it gets even real. Last year, 100 children died from flu, 100. Imagine if that was your baby. And so we know that this work that we have to do is really important. And so what we work with the CDC and we can do all the technical things and we gave them our ecological model, we gave them our logic plan, we gave them whatever they needed to do and guess what? And they did, they gave the National Council of Negro Women more than $15 million to get dollars into the hands of the chapters. And that's the work that we're trying to do. And we're very excited that within this model of knowing how we as individuals can get to our families, our friends. We are probably in more than one or two, three organizations each, but that's the ground game. That we said that if we work with our trusted messengers and if we train our trusted messengers, we'll be able to give people accurate information so that they can make the decision for themselves. And that's the work that we've been doing with CDC. So in year one, we were forming the Good Health Wins Network. Year two, we were norming this network. Year three, we are storming the network. And guess what? Year four, we're gonna be performing because that's what we're really all about, getting the job done. And so who's in this Good Health Wins Network? It is comprised of the NCNW states. We now have 20 states that are involved with it, but we also have our national affiliate partners. We have the um, Vaccinate Your Family. They're the subject matter experts. And you know, you may not have heard of that organization, but their work from the 1970s and their policy work is really why children have to have vaccines to go to school. And so we wanted to have credible partners at the table with us because we wanted to represent you all well. And so we have our national affiliate partners. And then as Brother Grand said, CDC said, we want the divine nine. You know why they want us? Because we get the job done with Army, for real, you know. And so it's been very exciting to be able to do this work. And I will say that it has been such an honor to work with the Council of Presidents. And it was, um, who, was uh, who was president when, uh, when we started Good Health Wins? Because he was council. I mean, Dr. Marion, absolutely. So we had Dr. Marion, who is providing the leadership at the Council of Presidents level to get the whole D9 organized. Thank God for Dr. Marion. Thank God for Omega Sci-Fi, right? And since then, we've had Brother Shelton at Kappa Alpha Psi. We have Sister Rashida Liberty, who is with uh, Sigma Gamma Rho. And each year, you know, the Council of Presidents changes over. So to have the pleasure to be able to work with so many Council of Presidents and to know that they are committed from the top down, because that's how it really works. Leadership flows down. And so, um, Brother Ricky Lewis and everybody, they made a series of PSAs that are available to you all that you can use um, in your chapters if you wanna be a part of Good Health Wins. So today, it's all about you. Good Health Wins is now the largest African-American response to COVID-19 in the country, and give yourselves a hand for that. We are 4.5 million strong across the country.
And so this picture you see is all of the project managers. We have 48 national project managers that are committed to Good Health Wins, and then uh, the project managers and the D9 presidents, we all went to Minnesota last year, um, that we are now looking at the vaccination ecosystem. Because guess what? This is not just about vaccinations, this is about money. And you all, let's keep it real. And so we wanted to understand this vaccination ecosystem. We wanted to see where are the state coalitions, where are the CDC, HHS, who are the immunization managers. And so we went in so that our folks could get trained around what's happening in the vaccination space. And so Good Health Wins is very simple. Here is another point that I want to share with you, as Brother Grant said. This money is for your chapters. The only way your chapter will get money is if you apply. There are many grants that are sitting there, and every organization does Good Health Wins differently. So this is about resources for you all to do the work. And there's lots of work to be done. This is not about hosting vaccine clinics. No, this is about partnerships. And so we want to see that you're able to partner with other groups and organizations. And guess what? You're already doing it. If you've ever worked with a school, raise your hand. If you've ever worked with a child care center, a boys and girls club, or a church, or a hospital, a pharmacy, a mobile clinic, anybody, you're already doing this. So what I'm sharing with you all is that you are eligible because you have a partner. If you are a collegiate chapter, your university, college or university, is your partner. You automatically qualify. So the goal is to get as many chapters to participate to do the work that we're doing. Activate, educate, motivate, celebrate. Here's what's really exciting. Okay, so how do you get activated? You apply. How do you get educated? If you apply, then we want you, one person, doesn't have to be the boss list, doesn't have to be the vice president, does any member of your chapter would be required to attend a session, a community, we call it community of practice, on the first and third Thursday. Who is it? Anybody which means the threshold is very low because I'm sure you have somebody. And so then your chapter would have a person to attend a community of practice. We encourage you all to rotate it. We don't care who it is. We just want to make sure that we stay in compliance in the grant. And when you come on those calls, we have everybody from across the country is on the call to talk about what's working, best practices, and we give you lots of examples of how to do this across uh, your organization or across your chapter. So you're already doing the work. So let me give you some very practical examples, you all. Let's say you are hosting a prostate cancer walk, right? You can use Good Health Wins funds to purchase the t-shirts. If you want to have the logo of your walk on the front, put a Good Health Wins QR code on the back. But those funds are paid for the t-shirts. If you are at an event, let's say you are hosting an HBCU tailgating party and you want to pass out some Good Health Wins flyers or have some snacks or whatever, you could use those funds to supplant that, right? If you wanted to get a tablecloth, when last time you bought a tablecloth for your chapter, right? A tablecloth, a banner, all of those kinds of things, those are eligible expenses in the grant. And so what we do is teach you what's available and those opportunities to help you supplant your funds and use these as program dollars. And so you have to apply because you know, you're already at no, your job is to get the yes. And we're doing lots of yeses, because we don't say no. That's Brother Fishburn and uh, you know, whatever constraints you all have within the organization, but every, you know, we're giving four cycles around this grant. So four times a year, your chapter can apply for the grant. It's a very simple, easy application process. Anybody can attend and be a part of the uh, community of practice session. And then the most important thing is, all we're doing is showing the CDC that we're trusted messengers and that we're better together. That's who we are and that's what we do. And so, 
In this grant, all you have to do on your application is show who your partner is. You show who your partner is, you have a program, activity, or an event, and you do one report a month, and it's not a complicated report. It's how many people were there? What did they look like? Uh, what did you learn? What did they say? How do they feel about vaccines? And you don't have to do a one-to-one -one grant, which means you don't have to count every single body. I would estimate might be a thousand people in the room that would go on my report. That's how simple it is. So I just really want you all to know that we're here to be able to continue to work together. And so you do that monthly report. You activate based off of what you were already going to do. You all are going to leave this leadership conference and you all are going to continue to do the great community service work in your communities. All we're saying is to overlay or embed vaccine information, activities, or events into what you were already going to do. That's the power of Good Health Wins. We've made it very, very, very simple. Here's the website, www.goodhealthwinshq at gmail.com, I mean, dot org. I want to hear from you today. I want to know that you all are ready to continue to do the work that you're already doing. And we'll continue to educate you because each month in our community of practice, we take you all through activities and events and ways that you can uh, continue the work with us. So for example, in August 3rd, right, first Thursday of August, we're hosting a national town hall on back to school. And we'll be talking to parents and families about um, the important vaccines that children need to go back to school, whether you are an infant, whether for daycare, whether you are in K-8, whether you're going to high school, and also for college. And so your recruitment of people on that call could be your Good Health Wins activity. I'm just saying, you know. So we provide all of these opportunities to make it easy for you to be a part of Good Health Wins. We host COVID conversations, and now we're gonna be talking about vaccines across the lifespan. But you can table at events, you can host workshops, things that you were already going to do. If you are hosting a workshop on mental health, and you bring in your speaker, and you're talking about the power of mental health, if you say things like, we have all been devastated in our mental health during COVID, that could be a Good Health Wins activity. You can provide a stipend to your speaker through your Good Health Wins funds. So you can apply for something that you were already going to do. So these are examples of different programs and events all across the country. Our website is goodhealthwins.org. You can go out on our events calendar. You can see the thousands of events that people and groups and organizations have done over the last three years. But again, these are opportunities for you to take what you were already going to do and to really embed vaccination and information and education on top of it. Look at this one flyer. They were giving in Flint, Michigan, water distribution. You know, water, Flint has a little problem with water. And, though, and so what they did is they were passing out the cases of water and they put on there a flyer on each um, water uh, case of where you can go get vaccinated. And so they were able to pay for all of that water, right? So we really want you to think about things that you are already going to do. So this has just been very exciting work. We've seen lots of, we're getting ready to mount up this campaign, lots of vaccine and voting information, right? Just natural outgrowths of things that you were already going to do, whether it's flyers or canvassing or door-to-door -door knocking. You can tell people we gotta go vote, like your life depended on it, but so is getting those vaccinations. So those are the kinds of things that we can be able to do. We've completed, we are now on 55 uh, community of practices since we've started Good Health Wins. And I tell you, our community of practices range from anywhere from three to 900 people on a call. Think about that. Every two weeks since the pandemic has begun, we've been able to keep the Army informed, educated, and aware of what's happening. We have, we have trained over 331,000 people have participated in all of our Good Health Wins activities. We have media impressions. So let's say you have a chapter um, Instagram or a Facebook page. 
you can get the facts, boost the truth, all of those kinds of things to extend the work that you're doing with vaccination and education, and then that can count as a mini grant. So what I'm sharing with you all is that there's so, so, so many different ways that you can participate in Good Health Wins. As we say, we are better together. You know, there is an African proverb, proverb that says, when spider webs unite, you can tie up a lion. And our lion this time was COVID. But we also have that lion of diabetes, of hypertension, of prostate cancer, of breast cancer. See, our work is not done. What this did is give us an opportunity to get organized and create a health infrastructure that the country has never seen before. You see, it's not if we're going to have another pandemic, it's when. And as we know, this pandemic has now gone from pandemic to endemic, which means it's always gonna be with us that there will always have to be the development of a, there will be a new strain and they'll have to develop a new booster to keep us all safe. But at the end of the day, we are better together. That's what we say in Good Health Wins. Mayor McLeod Bethune also said that if we have the courage and the tenacity of our forebears who stood firmly like a rock against slavery, that we shall find ways to do in our day what they did for theirs. And so this is what leadership is all about. It is not just stepping up, it's showing up and showing out because the world needs us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, brothers, for giving us to know you some love. Appreciate that. Uh, brothers, you may be seated. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brother George Fishburne, and I am your international program and project manager at International Headquarters. And what I wanted to do very quickly is explain the Omega Sci Fi process for applications. Moss is going to take some questions shortly, but I really needed to explain it, the process. Uh, and uh, 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 about a year ago, what we uh, determined was that a good way to get undergraduates involved, it was about six months ago to get undergraduates involved, was to have them to attend a, uh, the International Undergraduate Summit, and we did a special Good Health Wins presentation. You show up, and then we go ahead and we get you involved. But we found out that that didn't work. And one of the reasons that didn't work is because chapters uh, changed leadership. Uh, some undergraduate chapters did not have uh, advisors. And so what would happen is they would get the first disbursement and then disappear. You can't take federal money and not do the work and disappear. And so what we've done is uh, under the guidance of Brother Executive Director Howard, my boss, Brother Grant Lewis, what we did is we decided to make sure that the district representatives are an integral part of how chapters come into the Good Health Wins program. Next week, uh, each of our DRs will receive an email. It'll let them know how many slots their district has available to, uh, and they will send me names of chapters. I don't select chapters. Your DR selects the chapter, they vet the chapter, and they let me know, hey, Brother Fishburne, this chapter or these chapters will participate. I don't make that decision. Uh, just recently, uh, we had 17, I want you to get this number, 17 undergraduate chapters, a combination of 13 of undergraduate chapters and four graduate chapters, took the money and disappeared. Out of those chapters, one of them actually had the nerve to complain. And they went to the grand, they emailed their DR, and complain, my boss, and they complain. And the fact of the matter is, when you take the money and you disappear, you cannot participate in the program. That's not my rule. Can't, we can't give you federal funds and you disappear. So that is the process. Uh, your DRs will receive an email uh, next week, about a close of business next Friday, uh, next week Friday, and they will let, uh, let me know the chapters based on how many slots they have. Last but not least, uh, Brother Lewis, I want to acknowledge one chapter in particular that has been amazing. 
uh, in their work. And that chapter is the Ada Omega chapter out of Atlanta. They have done an amazing job with this program. So that is how we uh, become a part of it. I know Ms. Moss will take questions, but any application questions uh, will go to your DR, and I would wait a week until he receives uh, those funds, those, uh, uh, he's uh, made aware of the, the, the amount of slots he has available. Thank you, Brother Brennan. Yeah, Let's give Brother Fishburne another hand, brothers. Uh, just to be able to run this Give Health Grants program, we gotta keep up with the paperwork, the numbers, et cetera. As he said, we got the money to give out. We, we want to give the money out. We have to give the money out, but we have to have ch uh, chapters be compliant. But let's uh, get to the microphone. Uh, let's ask Ms., uh, Mrs. Moss a few questions, and she'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, I yield to the first mic. Good morning, ma'am, and thank you for your time to come out here. Uh, Freddie Thompson, I'm the DKRS for the 13th District. Um, I would like to ask you, how, how does this program work with the chapters that are international, with us having 19 chapters in the district um, over uh, 10 different countries? Um, very curious how that, because we have active chapters that are out doing the same things, whether they're on the military installations or out in the civilian populace, but how does this help us or how can we get integrated in this to take advantage of this program, if we can? So at this time, the CDC does not allow us to do uh, work outside of the 50 U.S. states. We have expressed our concern to the CDC that, you know, vaccinations are needed everywhere. So unfortunately, we're not able to distribute our dollars, but we continue to look to see if we can find money for you all. You can partner with the chapter in the states and then you are able to do that work, but the dollars themselves have to go to the fiscal agent, which would be the uh, chapter in the state. Yes, ma'am. There's, work, there's a workaround, but I gotta remember we're on uh, videotape right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. With, with that, the, the chapters that are um, doing work on the military installations, would that, would that be considered U.S properties for the CDC to take into consideration? They have not. Okay. Thus far, it's no. Thank you. Yes. Hello. 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 Good to have you. Good to have you. Melvin M. Slater, Sr., Iota Chapter, Chicago. I think I heard, I might, got, I might have the brother's name, Brother Fishburne? Yes. So, if I am understanding, not all chapters will be able to participate. You know what, let me just clarify. I know that he said that there were so, some chapters that may have had some reporting issues, but I want to say officially that Omega Psi Phi is in compliance. Mm -hmm. No, 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 let, let, let me restate my question. No, yes. uh -huh. okay. I think Brother Fit. Brother Slater, stand down one second. But let's be conscientious of the word non-compliance. Our grand council said we have to be sensitive about that uh, just from an exposure standpoint. So, Brother Slater, go ahead and answer. Okay, I didn't say anything about non-compliance. From what, my understanding from what Brother Fishburne said, there are going to be so many slots that each DR will have, so that means not all chapters can participate. Is that my understanding? So the good news is, is that, is this, your question is, will this be a competitive process? Yes. How it will be determined is within your organization. So for you all, have, you've decided to have it decided at the DR level. So they'll get, so everybody can apply and then there will be limited funds because every organization, I mean, we don't have an unlimited amount this year. Uh, we've given Omega Sci-Fi close to 280,000. So that money is going to be distributed across all of your regions. All right, my second question. Mm -hmm. Once the application is accepted, that's provided that your chapter gets selected, mm -hmm. from selection to receiving the funds, uh, generally, what's that time frame? So I will say, I will defer that back to Brother Fishburne because every organization does Good Health Wins differently. 
Generally, uh, we have four cycles that we distribute the grant. So generally, probably within weeks, once you're selected, that you'll receive those funds. But your guidelines for the organization will be in your application process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. And to, and to add to what Mrs. Moss uh, said, so what happens is once uh, the DRs give me their final uh, selection of names, we do an onboarding meeting. And it is in that meeting that you get everything that you need, including the application to complete. Uh, and it, it might seem kind of back backwards, but unfortunately, we've had to have DRs vet the chapters. We get them, they complete the application, they do the onboarding meeting, and we do meetings twice a month with our chapters. Uh, to, uh, to facilitate ma uh, making certain that they understand what's going on and any changes that might occur. And here's the good news, that you're able to apply in multiple rounds. So, you know, we're saying the first thing you have to do is apply. And let's say you apply and you don't get it in the first round, apply to the next one, right? Because the goal is to show you how to apply for these funds, but also how to secure the dollars because we know you're doing the work. Yes. Good morning, Ms. Moss. Morning. My name is Brother Cedric Guyton, 391 Namada Chi Epsilon. I serve now as the bosses of Nana Gamma Gamma mm -hmm. in our second district. Uh, coming at this from a totally dis different perspective, I want to thank you and the Grand, Grand Council for you being here. Uh, after living with this for three years, trying to get our brothers and our communities to understand the importance of dealing with misinformation and disinformation. The ability for you to provide resources as we tried to do early on in the COVID pandemic, doing it now is essential because as you said, I can tell you from my viewpoint, it's not if, it's when. And if we're not prepared, we're gonna see it three times as worse, four times as worse the next time. My question to you is, in your program, how have you infused or thought about utilizing some of the tenets of preventing the misinformation and disinformation from impacting the community as I know it did from my perspective, seeing how it slowed the progression of immunization rates. I looked at them daily for over three years. We stayed under 9%, 10%. We were the lowest for over three years. How can we ensure this doesn't happen again? Well, we know that it's not if there will be another pandemic, it's when. So one of the things that we've done in the Good Health Wins Network is that we continue to provide education to our trusted messenger network, 4.5 million strong. We recently started a Good Health Wins Trusted Messenger Certificate Program so that we provided five different modules to help educate our community on what's happening around vaccines. And so one of the things that we did, we actually had a workshop on uh, misinformation and disinformation. If you don't know this, our communities are being targeted, especially our young folks around social media. And one of the things that we've been trying to do is to say, if you, you know, it's like your mama used to say, if you know better, you do better, right? And so that's one of the things that we try to do is provide that quality information. We vet our information. Our sources are Good Health Wins, Vaccinate Your Family, the CDC, but we show you where to get the information so that you can make that informed decision. This also brings up something around, you know, let me tell you about the name Good Health Wins. It started off as Good Health Women's Immunization Networks, Good Health Wins, but once we brought the fraternities in, now we just say Good Health Wins. But if you think about it, look at the foresight of NCNW to talk about, you know, health is wealth when we start talking about all of these other things. So the name itself is branded and implies, and trademark, but it's branded and implies that, you guys, we have to have good health, period. Whether it be in our organizations, but as individuals, good health wins every time, and that's why we're really doing this work. So thank you for that question. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Brian Beverly, 988 Side Delta, uh, currently Beta Phi Chapter, Durham, North Carolina. My question is, are there, oh, well, and thank you for being here, and we'll pray for your continued safe travels. You obviously are, have a busy itinerary. Um, are there maximum and minimum grant amounts for the many grants, 
And is there an application deadline for the fiscal year you're currently in? So two parts of the question. Again, uh, Brother Fishburn is your point person. And I know they showed the QR code of how to access your mini grant process. But this is ongoing entry, which means that, again, the grant cycle goes from um, April 1 through March 31st. It's a different kind of grant year. But four times throughout that year, many grants will be available to the chapters to apply for. So again, at any point, you're probably in round two of year three, um, but you will have two, three, four before this grant cycle is over to participate. The amount of the grant is dependent upon the organizations and how you all have decided to disperse the dollars. So you definitely want to look at that application process and and I'll, I always say apply, apply, apply. You already add no. All you got to do is get the yes. You're already at no. Okay. One more. Hello. Wait, you want to talk about the amount? So in terms of the amounts that are received, it depends, received, it depends. So uh, last year we had 31 chapters. We had 37 chapters last year and each chapter received roughly about $4,000. Um, in the, the instance when chapters drop, then that potentially has the, poten that has the potential to increase what you receive for the remainder of the year. Uh, our chapters who are currently in uh, the program, the first quarter they receive $2,000 each. And so to an undergraduate chapter, you can imagine that would, would work wonders for them. Uh, the chapters that are coming in this second quarter, these newer chapters, that amount will vary. It's going to depend on how many chapters come in uh, uh, to the second quarter, and then we'll determine what that second quarter this person will look like. We have an idea, but I don't want to say it at, this, at present until we know the numbers in the DR send me their, uh, their names. Yes, sir. All right, I'm ready. Hello, Dr. Michael Bell, professor of emergency Medicine, University of California, San Francisco um, School of Medicine. I, I just, you know, I'm just hearing about this now, and I want to um, have my chapter to my Iota, Oakland, California, submit an application at some point. But so, what's the immediate deadline for the next round? Today. <laughs> <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the round after that what, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I, I just want you all to know that our goal is to these funds are available to your organization, and you just get into the grant process right away. The other thing is that it's a plus one grant, and can I say this that? Um, out on our Good Health Wins website, you can partner with an NCNW section, you could partner with another D9 organization or one of the national affiliates, you can partner with your, you know, if you're on a college campus with your college health center, you can partner with in your local community, go um, and see if there's anything that you all can do with your local health department. The goal of it is, is that take what you were already going to do in your programming and overlay. This does not have to be a new program or event. It can be just adding an edu educational component or information component to your current programs and activities or events. Looks like our last question. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, greetings, brothers. Bryce Bates, 715 Lambda Kappa Kappa, serving as, uh, currently as Bosilis. I just wanted to ask, could you restate the website? Uh, I tried to find it, uh, and I may not have heard you correctly. Okay. So could you please restate sure. the website? Absolutely. So it's goodhealthwins, with an S, dot org. That is our national website, or you can access it from ncnw.org. Uh, you know, we're very excited to be able to do this kind of work, and our goal is to make sure that you have the information, the access, the resources, and the support to be able to work in the communities of what you're already doing. So whether you are working through your uh, health uh, chairpersons or if you're partnering with other groups or organizations, this is really about us saying we're better together. You can contact us if you want more information. I would say out on our website under events, 
And you can just scroll back. You can actually, there is an opportunity for you to go back and see other events and programs that other groups and organizations have done. What qualifies for Good Health Wins? Everything. I haven't given you a no yet, other than if you don't apply, I can't give you any money. But our goal is to make sure that you know that this is about us creating this infrastructure of health advocates who understand the importance of vaccines across the lifespan. Can't thank you enough. Thank you, my brothers of Omega Sci Fi. Thank you, Brother Ricky Lewis. Thank you, Brother George Fishburne. And thank you all for getting involved with Good Health Wins because we're better together. Thank you. Sonovia, thank you. We wish you some travel. A little gift from the men of Omega Sci Fi as you travel. We thank you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Indiana. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bell, Mike Bell, can you come to the front for me? Yeah, we've done your disservice. You're in the 12th D, and you don't know about this program, so we take full responsibility, but I'm finna get Sigma Oda some money right now. See the DR right there? Say, hey man, uh, Sigma Oda. Put out a chapter name in it. Mike Bell, he wants some money. So tell the DR right here. Make sure when you turn in the chapter name, turn in Sigma Oda. Just got you some money, bro. That's about as simple as it is, brothers. The DR submit the chapter names. We give you the money when you come to the webinars. About as simple as it gets. Uh, some clarity on a couple of things. When we talked about Senator Tuberville, we didn't mean you called as an Omega Sci-Fi member. You just called as a citizen of the United States. Am I correct, Perk? Just call as a citizen. You don't have to say you're a member of Omega Sci-Fi. None of that. It's not important. Just write a letter, Senator Tuberville. We ask you to release the names of these outstanding service men and women to be promoted. Something simple like that. Uh, somebody can legalize the word for us. Shouldn't be long. Should be straightforward. Um, Brother Grant Smith brought up a point. You can't go to the website, Good Health Wins website for the money. Just go to your DR. Go to your DR. It's about as simple as that. Your DR submits your name, and then we, IHQ, will take care of the rest. Once the names come in, George Fishburne will take it from there. We have to give the money out. We, we, we can't even roll it over. We just have to give the money out every year. And then they give us more money, and we give more money out. So, brother, we ask you to do that for us. If you can do that for us, we'll shut up.